What's going on guys, welcome back to season two of my NHL 21 San Jose Sharks franchise mode series. If you guys missed the last episode, I'm not gonna lie, you missed a lot. I would definitely recommend watching the first one because we completely changed this team. As you can see there, the Stanley Cup went to Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, so they finally get the monkey off their back, taking on the Stanley Cup after over 50 years. Now, the San Jose Sharks, we were actually in position to make the playoffs at the deadline, and then we absolutely just botched it. I think we lost like seven of eight or something, so I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna trade away the entire core, but it worked out as we brought in some nice pieces, signed some good free agents. Here's a look at the team. So first line there, you got Thomas Hurdle playing with Alex Wenberg and Timu Meyer getting a plus five, which is huge. They're gonna be playing like 89 and 90. So I think they're gonna have a really good season. Second line here, you got Kaprizov playing with Donato and Landeskog. Also a very solid second line. I actually got both Kaprizov and Boldy in exchange for Eric Carlson, who actually went up in rating. So I was able to kind of sell him at his high price. Landeskog, of course, was a free agent signing. Duclair playing with Thornton, we brought back and Boldy on the third line. And then we have Armia, Kopp, and LeBanc on the fourth line. So good amount of forward depth there, good amount of stars. Defensively, definitely weaker, but I'm not too upset with that as I wouldn't mind having a high pick this year to have a chance at Shane Wright, Brad Lambert, or Matthew Savoy. So top pair, Adam Pellet, Shane Gossespierre get a plus five. They're playing like 87, 89. So with all the chemistry boosts, this team actually might you know outperform my expectations. Murray and Zadarov, second pair. And then Ferraro and Alexiev on the bottom pair. Uh, the next two lines, you can see both getting plus one. Gold tanning, Bane Timmy signed as a free agent. He's our starter. Dubnik back him up. We actually brought him back real cheap, I think, for an A3 overall goalie, only making 1.5 million. Now, special teams here, guys. Already have plus five on the first forward line and the first D pair. We also have plus five on our power play. I mean, this is ridiculous. I don't think I've ever had this good chemistry this quickly. Like, it's pretty crazy. Uh, Landeskog, Wenberg, Meyer, Gossespierre, Kaprizov. I think it's um, mostly Wenberg, Gossespierre, and Meyer. They seem to have like really good chemistry, like no matter where I'm putting them. Now even the second unit there gets a plus one, LeBanc, Hurdle, Donato, uh, Boldy, Claire. So power play looks good. The four man there you can see plus one zero. PK is not too bad. Uh, the three man does have two minus ones. I was trying and trying. I could not get rid of it. So uh, we're just gonna have to rock that. And actually guys, I made a quick change here. I noticed Ferrara wasn't on any of the PKs. So I put him on the second penalty kill to try Get him a bit of growth there. 23 years old, 80 overall. Should be able to turn out into at least, you know, an 82 for us. And real quick, guys, I want to thank Dr. Squatch for sponsoring today's video. Dr. Squatch will take your shower game to the next level by providing natural, healthy products that allows you to level up your soap game as well as step up your scent. All of Dr. Squatch's soaps are made in the USA, as you guys can see right there on the side of the packaging. Also, they include all natural ingredients. You compare them to, like, big soap brands, you can really tell what's natural and what's not. I uh, was looking at the back of this one. Made with olive oil, coconut oil, shea butter... Uh, pine fragrance, oatmeal, sand, uh, charcoal, clay, sea salt. They're definitely creative over there. Um, the ingredients they're using. Uh, if you guys want a quick look, they're actually coming in different colors too. So I'm not sure if you guys would care, but uh, this one here is black. There's another one I have actually that's really cool. Definitely my favorite. Uh, this one is the Grapefruit IPA. It's literally made out of beer. Honestly, it's really cool to me all the creative scents they come up with, which explains why hundreds of thousands of men are already subscribed to Dr. Squatch, which means every single month they get a new bar of fresh soap at their door. And the best part is, guys, if you aren't 100% satisfied, this isn't the best bar of soap you've ever used. They will send you your money back, no questions asked, so there's no risk at all to give it a try. And right now they actually have a special offer where new customers can get 20% off on orders of $20 or more. All you have to do is use my code DSCTACTICSHD20. Click the link in the description, it'll bring you right there. Again, guys, that's code DSC, tax HD20. Obviously, if you check it out, it helps with the channel. So make sure you go and do that. Again, risk-free. If you don't like it, you get your money back. Now, let's get back to the video. Uh, AHL team here isn't too bad. Uh, Gamble actually got sent down. He's an 80. So if we make a trade and, you know, it's a two-for-one, we can call him up. Other than him, though, really no one too great. Um, defensively, Ryan Merkley, 21 years old, 24 overall, medium elite. So hopefully, turns into a good offensive defenseman for us. Goaltending wise, Gustum there, 23, 80 overall. I think that's really solid. We'll probably take over for Dunick as the backup next season. Allen felt there, backing up in the AHL is also solid. Uh, we drafted Wolstead in the draft. Also got Dylan Gunther. Also got Carson Lambos. Uh, so we're looking pretty good in that regard. Um, two, I know I asked you guys who I should make captain this season. I had three A's at the end of last episode. Thomas Hurdle, who was on the team last year. Joe Thornton, of course, has been a captain for the Sharks before. And then Gabe Landeskog, captain of the Avalanche. And it seemed like most people wanted me to give the C to Thornton, at least until he retires, which could be this season. I'm fine with that. Uh, Thornton actually did win a cup last year with the Leafs, which was pretty awesome to see. Marlowe unfortunately retired with us, which is honestly kind of sad to think about. The player with the record for most career NHL games never won a Stanley Cup. Like, that is so, so tough. Um, in terms of the overalls here, 
We have 93 offense, 88 defense, and 86 school attending. So I said how I wanted a high pick this year. I think our team is going to be too good for that. Uh, we just brought in too many good pieces in the trades, even though, you know, we get, get younger and a little bit over, lower overall. Also made some good free agent signings, and then with the chemistry boost, we might even make the playoffs. Uh, I'm good for whatever happens, so let's find out. All right, guys, we're out the end of December here with a really good record, 23-11-6. So, yeah, probably not going to have a lottery pick, let alone, you know, first, second, third overall. Second in the division right now behind only the Canucks, or only one point back as well. Blues there, 52. Maple Leafs, 56. So we're only four points back of the Presence Trophy. Hurdle right now has got a point per game, 40 and 40. So uh, yeah, we're definitely doing better than I expected. I thought at this point I'd probably have in the 40s, you know, around a wild card spot. Uh, but with the chemistry boost, again, I think that's probably the biggest thing. Uh, this team is definitely doing a lot better than I expected. And right, we have the deadline here, guys, with a 35, 20, and 6 record. So we're continuing to play well. I think that's 76 points we have. Now five back the Canucks, which isn't too bad. Um, I mean, Maple Leafs there have 80, Hurricanes 88, they're having a really good season. Hurdle's now a little under point per game at 54 and 61, but still not too bad. So, I'll get to the deadline now. I guess we're going to have to be conservative buyers, because um, looks like we're probably in the playoff picture. Definitely not going to trade away any of our good young pieces. Um, so, not going to trade away, you know, the three guys we took in the first round last year. Uh, I'm not going to trade away Matthew Boldy, Kaprizov, anything like that. But if we can make a good hockey trade, I'm definitely all ears. Bergeron there, high trade play on the trade block. 90 overall. He's only got one year left now, 6.8 million. Carey Price, that's an interesting one. Five years at 10-3. Uh, definitely not going to pick up that contract. Merz Lincoln's up to an 87. One year left at 4 million. Wow, I've never actually seen him grow that much. Darnell Nurse there, uh, one year left. Ryan Suter, another big contract. That's why his value is so low. Max Domi, Nick Letty, Josh Manson. We actually don't have the greatest defense. Manson wouldn't be too bad. 85 overall, one year left. Even if he's a rental, his value's not too high. And if not, we could potentially, you know, keep him. Raquel as well, one year left. We'd also be taking players from a rival. Could get both those guys. Zabanajad, one year left, 85 overall. Surprise his value is that low, honestly. But I guess he's only 85, and I'll probably walk in free agency. So um, I'm thinking Manson, Raquel would be a couple good guys to trade for. Definitely more so Manson than Raquel. Honestly, we don't even need Raquel. Like, our offense is pretty stacked, but... If I can make a trade happen here for Josh Manson, I think that'll help us out a lot. And check this out, guys. Right now, I'm trying to make a trade for Manson. Looking at the trade values on this team, and Shane Gossespierre just exploded. Equal value there to Ryan Merkley, Dylan Gunther. Like, that's nuts. Could try and sell him high right now. The thing is, he obviously, he's helping us for a playoff push. I think it might make more sense to trade him in the summer. Could potentially even include him in a package at the draft to try and get one of those top three picks. I also noticed this McGuire guy who we just drafted, 65 overall already. I'm pretty sure he came out of the draft like a 50-52, so uh, that's really good to see. I was looking at Wallstead as well. He's now a 66, so looks like we're getting decent growth on this team. So right here, guys, the offer I came up with to get Manson from the Ducks. I'm giving up Chekovich here, 23 years old, 77 overall, so he's like a decent prospect. Only has a few years left to grow, though. And a second round pick in this year's draft is actually Columbus's pick. For Manson, of course, and Washington's third round pick, which the Ducks have. Uh, the value looks pretty much right on. Both their things are on the block. I think this goes through. And it does. Okay, so there we go. Bolstered our defense, which, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Uh, it was definitely our weakest thing. Uh, Shea Weber, is he new to the block? I feel like if, if he was there before, I completely skipped over him. I don't think he was, though. Um, so interesting. Nick Letty also got traded there. Suter off the market. Nurse as well got traded. Same with Carey Price. Wow, I wonder what that trade was because... Obviously, tons of salary moving. We'll have to see at the end. Uh, still have a lot of time left here in this deadline, so I'll see what else is out there and see if we make another trade. All right, guys. Next year, I'm trying to make a blockbuster prospect trade. I don't know why. Edmonton has both Kent Johnson and Matthew Beniers on the block. They drafted them 6th and 7th overall, respectively, in the last draft. Both played for Michigan, so um, obviously, it doesn't really affect it in-game, but we can pretend that they have a ton of chemistry together. Also, my last franchise with the Maple Leafs, I saw both these guys grow a ton. I think Johnson got up to like a 92, but Nears was at least an 89, whereas Gunther for us was a bust. I think he maxed out 80, maybe 81. Um, McGuire here is made up. He's grown a lot already, so his value's gone up, but I'm not really sure what'll happen to him. I would much rather have Johnson and Beniers. I mean, there's a reason they both went 6-7. and seven. We got Gunther 12. Uh, we got McGuire in the fourth round. I'm also adding Gushin here. He's an like, okay prospect, 2068 medium top nine, just to kind of even it out. Although I think like the value is pretty equal, but even though their things are on the block, they don't necessarily want our pieces. So um, Nashville, I'm just going to say no to that. And we're going to have to redo this. Oh my God. All right, guys, before another trade comes in, let's see what Edmonton says to this offer. Are you kidding me? They say yes. 
What a steal. Oh my goodness. So we are going to be absolutely stacked in the future. Like we're already so good with a pretty young core. Like our new core is under 30. Um, Landon Scott was one of the older guys at 29. Same with Gossip Bear 28. But I mean, we have Perfetti, Drysdale, Kent Johnson, Ryan Merkley, Carson Lambos, Matthew Meniers. We have Jesper Wolstead in goal. We have Kaprizov, Matthew Boldy. Like, Kaprizov would probably wear the C eventually, or I don't know. He's going to be like one of the older guys on the eventual core once, you know, Hurdle's gone, Meyer's gone. That is ridiculous. Like, so much to look forward to here. Um, one thing, cool thing, too, I kind of feel bad about trading Gunther. But he does play in the WHL for the Edmonton Oil Kings, so now he gets to stay in Edmonton on the Oilers, which is kind of cool. Again, though, that was too good of a trade to pass up. I can't believe that happened. And the trade deadline's now over, guys. Calgary Flames here get Casey Zizekas for Antoine Moran, Matthew Phillips. Vancouver got Joel Edmondson, Paul Stastny, Montreal gets Brayden Holpe. Uh, of course, our trade there with Edmonton, I still think that's such a great trade. Nashville got Evan Bouchard from the Oilers in exchange for a couple picks and Spiza. Spiza's like, what, 81 max? Bouchard's already 78. I don't know what Holland's doing with the Oilers because that's not a good trade. The one we made with us is definitely not a good trade either. Um, I kill Thomas, there goes the Rangers, and the LA Kings get Mika Zibanejad, Jeff Petrie, the Blues, with Xavier Olette. Montreal gets Neighbors, a couple picks. Um, Arizona gets Troy Stetcher, Cogliano from Detroit. Detroit gets a second, Levi and a fifth. Um, the Devils there get a first round pick. And Broberg, Edmonton gets Will Butcher, David Krejci, Miles Woods. They're going all out trying to win this year, but giving up a first round pick and Philip Broberg for those pieces, I don't know. Again, I'm not sure what Holland's thinking. Uh, Samuel Poulin, a couple of other pieces. Go to the Ducks, Pittsburgh gets Raquel. Uh, Detroit gets Ilya Sorokin. I wouldn't be upset with that. Um, only had to give up a third round pick, a seventh, a prospect. Of course, our trade the Ducks to get Josh Manson. Minnesota there got um, second round pick and Spence. LA got Jonas Brodeen, Lekkinen. LA also got Nick Letty in exchange for a couple picks and Tyler Madden. Florida got Ryan Polak. Islanders got a pick and Gudas. Um, Buffalo there pick Aramov from Ottawa for Jurgensen. Third and a fourth. Montreal gets Darnell Nurse and a fourth round pick from the Oilers. Edmonton gets Carey Price and a third. I can't believe that. So Edmonton was a team that traded for Carey Price. They also got David Krejci with Will Butcher and Miles Wood. And then they also traded us their prospects. And they traded away Evan Bouchard. I'm not even sure how they did all that. Because I thought David Krejci was making $7 million. Price is $10. Uh, that seems like a lot of money. They got rid of Nurse who's making 5 I don't know. Like I said, Holland's doing some crazy things here. Uh, Philly got Bobby Ryan, uh, Boston there gets Tyson Forster, Winnipeg got P.K. Subban, interesting for a first round pick, Logan Stanley, Ottawa got Marc-Andre Fleury, um, Edmonton got a second round pick and a fourth, so they had Fleury to begin with, trade him away, then trade for Carey Price, I feel like they should have just kept Fleury, also not giving up Broberg or Beniers or Johnson, it would have been a much better spot, uh, Toronto there Mayfield for a first rounder, wow. That much just because he's on a good contract. I think he's like 81 overall. Uh, Brett Shulak. Let's see. How good is he? Our defense is kind of banged up. Not a 78 though. If he was an 80, I'd pick him up. But not 78. So I got to edit the lines now. Got to get those plus fives back again. <laughs> Ken Holland uh, might be the new Peter Shirelli. So after the trade deadline, guys, here's an updated look at the lines. Obviously, no changes to the offense. Defensively, though, we now have Murray and Manson as the second pair. I didn't even realize Manson's an 85. For some reason, I thought he was 84. So... Uh, makes that trade even better in my eyes. In terms of the special teams, he's not playing on the power play or the four-man because he's a defensive defenseman. He is on both PKs. Uh, first, I think, unit for each as 85 overall actually makes him our highest-rated defenseman. As well, too, with that big trade, getting Johnson and Beneers. I want to make sure that they're playing as they're technically, you know, college free agents. No college in this game, so they're in the AHL. Uh, playing on the second line right now. Getting a plus one. Obviously, they're a bit lower rated, but they're getting good ice time here. You can see Johnson was playing for Edmonton. Veneers, though, was scratched. So he's going to get some ice time now. Plus, they have Chemelski there on the line with them. 78 overall. Pretty decent player. So hopefully, you know, they can grow again. Big hopes for both those guys. As I mentioned before, I think the future young core of this team is going to be outstanding. We've got another month and a half or so here. So we'll see how this current team does. Should be a playoff team, but you never know. And as soon as the trade deadline ends, Blue Jackets fire Tortorella. Not really sure what he did at the trade deadline, but they weren't happy about it. And it's not the end of the season here, guys. We have a 48-27-7 record, so a very good year. 103 points there. Won the Pacific Division. That's outstanding, especially since, you know, last year, or I should say last summer, not even a whole year ago, trade away more than half of this team. Uh, Blues there 100. Maple Leafs 103. Hurricanes 103. 
but they have a game left. So if the Hurricanes lose, we'll actually have a three-way tie there for first. I'm not sure if we'll have the tiebreaker for the President's Trophy, but that'd be pretty awesome. Hurdle there, 74 points, 82 games. Did still finish as a leading scorer on this team. I feel like he's definitely going to upgrade from 85. At least 86, probably 87. Matthew Boldy there, 67 points. I'm not sure if he played in the NHL last year, because if he didn't, I think he has a chance with the Calder. Landis Kallik, 64. Donato, 61. He could again go up in rating. Kaprizov, 60. Gosses Bear, 60. He's going to definitely shoot up from the 82. I think top pair with uh, Pelic, getting a plus 5, just allowed him to play all offensively, because Pelic can kind of watch the defensive side of our game. He's also got a plus 17 like Boldy. So both those guys doing good things when they're on the ice for this team. Meyer there, 58. Same with Wenberg. Duclair, 53. Thornton almost had 50 points. 42 years old. Hopefully he doesn't retire, unless we win the cup, in which case it's fine. LeBanc, almost 40 points. He's playing fourth line for us. Uh, he's got three years left there, almost $5 million. If he's going to be fourth line again, definitely rather trade him. Kind of get some value for him. Um, look at everyone here. Honestly, I can't be upset. Like This team did a lot better than I expected. Jordan Bennington in net, 0.901 and 2.99. Dubnik actually had a bit better numbers, but I think being the backup, probably got better matchups. I'll take a look at the AHL team here. Gregor, 54 points, 65 games. Isn't too, too bad. Uh, Johnson, 36 points, 66 games. Okay, Merkley, 35. Let's see how Beniers did in that last month and a half. 10 points, 16 games. That's honestly pretty solid. It's probably about his same points per game as like you know the better AHL players on the team. Gustin there also had pretty solid numbers. Again, I'm thinking he'll probably be the backup for us next season. I'll take a look at the entire league here. Definitely Hurdle, not going to be anywhere close. Kutra 107. Malkin there, 35, still tearing it up. McDavid, Point, Sagan. Nylander, Kane, Eichel, Forsberg. So most of the guys you'd expect. Um, defensively here, Eric Carlson, 71 points with the Minnesota Wild. <sighs> probably going to win the Norris, although Hughes and Klingberg right on his heels, one point back. Hughes could actually outscore him as he has a game left there. So Minnesota's probably not too upset with this trade. You know, they give us Kaprizov and Boldy, but they get the high scoring demon in the league. Still though an 88, could go up in rating, but they're paying him a ton. I'm fine with the trade. I think it made sense. We have Merkley coming up. We have Drysdale coming up. Rookie skaters, Caulfield 81. Wow. So Boldy was a rookie, but got scored by two by Raymond. Zegers had, what is that? Six more. Caulfield 81 with 58 goals. 89 overall. So I boosted him from low elite to medium elite because he had a really good season this year playing with Wisconsin. People said I should do it. I agreed, but his rookie year, he had 58 goals. Medium elite might be a bit too much for him. He's got perfect hands there at 99 everything. I think he starts out like a 72. So in two seasons, he gained 17 overall, 58 goals, basically the next team of Solani. All right, so I'm going to have to you know pull back his hands a bit or something. Seems a little bit OP, but... Um, honestly, it's probably more fun if he's OP rather than just not being a factor. So Carolina already has 49 wins, which is one more than us. So, okay, so even if they lose, I think they're going to have the tiebreaker. But uh, five teams there, 100 plus points. Trying to see who finished the last in the entire NHL. Edmonton makes the playoffs as the 18th seed, so they barely squeak in there. And they're making all those trades as if they were like a Stanley Cup contender. Still don't understand that one. Detroit last place. <sighs> that sucks to see that, but... What are you going to do? So we get started with the playoffs now, guys. I'm actually not sure who we're playing. I didn't really look at the wild card. Uh, so we have the second wild card here in the central. The Minnesota Wild. Wow. How perfect is that? Not only is Eric Carlson on their team, and we have Kaprizov and Boldy, but we also have Donato, Dubnik. I think Minnesota might have some other former Sharks, too. Uh, let's see. So they got Parise, Stahl, Zuccarello, Greenway, Eriksonek, Fiala, uh, this Mills guy, Stepan, Felino, Seneshin, Rast, Sturm. Trading us Cabras off and Boldy left them like no offense. Uh, Suter, Carlson, Dumba, Susie, 67, Jordan Spence. He should be an AHL player. I don't even know if he makes our AHL defense in Addison. So Carlson, I guess, is carrying their team. They have no offense. They don't even have defense outside of him, really. Grubauer's their starter, Kacken back him up. So they got good goalies, but this doesn't even look like a playoff team to me. If, Car if Eric Carlson single-handedly beats us in this first round, I'm going to cry. But like I said, like their offense, pretty much non-existent. I like our team a lot better. Home ice advantage here. First two games, 5-4 OT loss and a 1-0 loss. Are you kidding me? The next two games are in Minnesota. Come on, state of hockey. 3-0 win, we shut them out. And a 5-2 loss. This team, this... I don't know what I'm missing. This team is trash. Heading home, game five. Wow, 5-4 OT loss. Carlson did it to us. Are you kidding me? 
<laughs> that is ridiculous. Anthony Duclair and Josh Manson, of all people, were the lean scorers on our team, both at a point per game. Josh Manson's a defensive defenseman, so that's super weird. <sighs> Let's see, Carlson. It actually, okay, it wasn't even Carlson. Zach Parise just went off. 37 years old, 8 points, 5 games. He wants a Stanley Cup. Eric Carlson only had 3 and 5. I, I still, I can't believe we lost to that team. Now, guys, our HL team also made the playoffs. I see they beat the Bakersfield Condors in the first round. They're not up against the Cardo Eagles, who they're currently down 2 nothing against, but both one goal games. Oh my gosh, did they? <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's insane. So they actually won the third game. Okay, so they were down 2 1, then 3 to 1, and then led Cleveland versus Golden State. Three straight there. Wow, that is very impressive. Uh, they now have the Rockford Ice Hogs here. Can they keep it going? A Calder Cup would be pretty nice. They get a win, they get a loss, 7 0 win, 4 1 win, 3 2 OT win. Calder Cup final against the Toronto Marlies. Okay, how outstanding is this? Both 11 and 6. Uh, I guess we'll sim period by period because we know a lot of the AHL players. Curious to see kind of who comes up for us. Gambro, Blitchfeld, 3 1, Glant on the fourth line. We hold on there. 3 1 win in the first game against the Marlies. Game number 2 here, up to nothing. Robbins, Middleton, uh, 3 to 2, Beneers gets one. Oh no, Anderson for them. Oh, are you kidding me? Charche. I think he's actually a former Shark, judging by that picture. Uh, he gets them the win there in game number two. So it's a 1-1 series, but Marley's actually at home ice advantage, so we're heading back to San Jose now. And we're up 4 nothing. What a first period. 5-1. And we hold on there. I was going to say, if we blow a 5-1 lead, I would say just, you know, quit. Don't even play the rest of the series. So going to game four again, home ice. Hopefully we can keep this going. Here we go, first period, 0-0. Second, are you kidding me? Third, let's go, two goals. Uh, Johnson actually a game winner. Hutchinson's a net for them. Leonard there gets an empty netter. So Marley's, of course, we know a pretty good team. Rodion Amirov I saw was on it, some other guys. But we're now up 3-1. So just have to win one of these next three games. We get a Calder Cup, which kind of makes up for our early first round exit in this year's playoffs. Game number five, two nothing. Kent Johnson with both. He had a goal in the last game, the game winner. I'm really liking that trade for him. A Blitzfeld also looked pretty good. Glant again, fourth line is getting it done. And there we go, San Jose Barracuda, our Calder Cup champs. I guess we could have showed like them winning it, but uh, I feel like it's just not quite as cool as the Stanley Cup. So that's pretty awesome. And the NHL playoffs still going on. It's Pittsburgh, Minnesota in the Stanley Cup final. Pittsburgh had a, or sorry, Minnesota had three two lead. It's now three three. If Minnesota wins this. No, they don't. Okay, I was going to be kind of upset, honestly, if they did, because, like, come on. They traded those cameras off in Boldy. They had nothing on their team. Like, they, unless they were getting plus five chemistry on every single line, that would literally be the only explanation. Finally, Detroit wins the lottery first overall. If it wasn't us, they get Shane Wright. I see Colorado actually jumps up from 10 to 3, so their pick will probably be on the block. Maybe we can make a trade to get it from them, because, obviously, Lambert and uh, Savoy would both be up for grabs. I'd be fine with either or. So we'll get to the draft now. Also, we have to look at retired players. I'm curious if Joe Thornton calls it quits this year. If he does, we'll have to name a new captain. Hopefully he doesn't, though, because, okay, perfect. He didn't call it quits. I was going to say, I want to try and win with Cup. Um, back is Filipula. Wow, pretty honestly terrible uh, retirement class. Goaltending-wise, nothing either. So we're at the draft now, guys, and I was right. Colorado has their third overall pick on the block, so i got to try and make a move for that. I'm not sure there's any creative players in this one. Okay, if there are, they're not as good as the top three. Right there, medium elite, Lambert, Savoy, both high elite. So we'd be trading for Savoy, essentially, with Carlos pick. That's fine. I think Lambert might be, like, one overall higher. I don't mind, also, right going to Detroit. Hopefully, they can finally rebuild their team around him. And obviously, they're in the East, so if we ever ran into them in the playoffs, it wouldn't be until the Stanley Cup final anyways. Landon McCollum, I'm pretty sure, is medium top six. Let's sort by potential. Oh, my gosh. Reared in here. Medium elite defenseman, guaranteed. Uh, we can get him at 104, so that's amazing. We'll add him to Lambos, Trisdale, Merkley. Uh, could be our future top four. Uh, Zilkin, I don't think is medium elite because he's got a face. I would otherwise know. Uh, Zaitsev, Russian goalie, could be medium elite. This Hayes guy, Nachushkin there. I mean, 50-50, you know, medium elites. I'm fine I'm taking a risk on. In terms of gems, one guy, man, 42. We trade our second round pick for Josh Manson, so we can't take him. But that's okay if we get the medium elite defenseman at 104 whatever. First things first though, I want to try and get Carlos third overall pick here. Get Matthew Savoy, just add him into an already stacked young core. All right guys, so next year I'm trying to get Carlos third overall pick in exchange for our 25th pick and Anthony Duclair. They really like Duclair. Um, you can see $5 million for two more years, 26 years old, 85 overall. 
Third line left winger for us, though. We can basically just replace him with LeBanc, who was on the fourth line. We'll see what they say to this one. Trade rejected, which is fair. I thought, honestly, it might be. Zabarov they like. Why not add him to the trade? If it gets a Savoy, it's worth it. Still rejected. Okay, here we go. Two first-round picks this year in 2025 with Duclair for third overall. Come on. Trade is still rejected. I'm not sure if I showed you guys yet, but Ghost Ratings on up to an 84. He's actually the highest value player on our team now. One year left at four and a half million. He might go to free agency. Coming off a big year. Let's sell high. Try and trade him for third overall and draft Matthew Savoy. Cardo says no. Okay, so I gotta work quick. 46 seconds. Ghost goes to spare with our 25th pick. They say yes. We got third overall. 45 seconds. We're now on the clock here. Was that a bad trade? I don't think so. Building for the future. Basically sold high. We get Matthew Savoy. Just another insane prospect to build around this team. 75 overall high lead out of the draft. I feel like we can probably sign someone like Gossel Spare to free agency, whether it's, you know, a Tyson Berry or a player like that. Now our next pick here, guys, is number 80. Uh, we'll see who's out there. I honestly might take the medium elite guy just to be safe. Um, our next pick's 87, so I don't really think that's going to matter. Again, this Reardon dude, I just want to, you know, not take any chances. Defenseman with immediately potential. 54 overall isn't too bad. So like I said, him, Drysdale, Merkley, Lambeau. So that's our future top four. More than happy with that. Um, I'm not sure what that trade was. I accidentally clicked A there, but pick 87. Uh, Hayes, 50-50, medium elite. Could try him. I kind of like it, honestly. There's a lot of players like that, but he's actually supposed to go pretty soon. So better chance, basically, of him actually being good. Our scouts like Cope, but... I don't trust those stars anymore. I think they're basically worthless. And Hayes is a medium bottom six. That's tough. And our next pick actually wasn't until the seventh round. We didn't have a fourth, fifth, or sixth. So that's okay. Got our guy in Max Savoy. Um, Cope here I mentioned before. We'll take him now. Medium elite. Medium seventh. Like I said, the stars don't mean anything. And final pick in the draft for us. Pick number 23 in the seventh round. Hopefully can find somebody. Maggio here plays for the Spitz. I don't think his potential is that great. I'm not sure if it might be AHL. I honestly don't remember. Eaton though is probably a low elite, which is pretty good for 7th round, so I'll take him. And medium 7th, come on. So our first couple picks in that draft were really good after that though. Not so great. We're not the re-sign phase guys, and I see that our entire AHL coaching staff needs a new contract. Obviously gonna offer them all new contracts, seeing as they literally just won the Calder Cup. All right, guys, we're at the re-sign phase here. We have just under $22 million in cap space. Hurdle here is the top player at the re-sign. Doesn't want an extension. Are you kidding me? 9.2 million, 86 overall. Oh, that's, oh, that's just so tough to justify. Um, I was actually looking at it. So, Kaprizov stayed the same rating. Wenberg's up 2 to an 86. Lance Dog's actually down one. Um, right here, you guys can see Joe Thornton's down 84 overall. He's gone up by three. 42 years old. He also doesn't want an extension. We're bringing him back no matter what, though. Because uh, he's going to be the captain of this team. And hopefully we can win a Stanley Cup with him. So I'll offer him four. And I'll basically just keep going up every single day. till he says yes. Uh, Josh Manson would also like to bring back. Make the trade kind of better. Three years. He actually wants to stay with us. So 4.5 probably gets it done. Uh, he's 84 overall. Maybe we'll do two years. Just till he's 32 in case he starts to you know drop off. Also by then, hopefully have more of our prospect defensemen making the team. Andrew Kopp, I think, was fine. Fourth liner. 1.5 for 81. I mean, that's pretty reasonable. I'll probably say yes to like 1.4 and obviously holds down that fourth line center position. Ferraro is going to be a bomb pairing defenseman for us. 1.45 for three years. Let's do like 1.35 and hopefully grows, in which case that contract's actually a steal. Gambrel here. 13th forward, so he actually might make the team. Let's do 1.1. Should be good. And looking at our goalies here, guys. Bainton's still locked up. Dubnik doesn't want an extension, which is fine, because Gustafson's down 82, so actually could be a really good backup. $750,000 as well for two years. Um, three years, okay, let's do two years. That's a great bargain price. Dubnik can go to free agency. Allen Fell will be the AHL starter. Wallstead, AHL backup. If he grows in the summer, potentially even AHL starter, honestly. So uh, we're good in terms of goalies. Uh, we're going to advance the day now. Let's see what happens with some of those contracts. Our HL head coach accepts. <laughs> he said mulling it over. Not happy with the role, but I guess I'll take it. Um, this guy's not interested in joining. I gave him literally the role he asked for, HL associate coach. So that's kind of weird to me. I think Josh Manson just accepted. I accidentally clicked A. I'm always, you know, too quick with that trigger finger. Andrew Kopp here also accepts. 
Gambrel says yes, Ferraro, Joe Thornton, there we go. Can't lose the captain. Uh, Augustin's coming back, Wallstead as well. So let me actually quickly check, did Manson say yes? Uh, he did, $4.5 million for a couple seasons, so that's really good. Uh, we still have $14 million in cap space, so now the only high rated player we have to resign is Thomas Hurdle. I was thinking for him, maybe do like a one year, because it does get cheaper. And we get the plus five chemistry bonus with him, which I don't really want to lose until I can find someone to replace him basically and get plus five. So. Um, if he does one year 8 million, and then maybe next year we can do an extension for around that price, kind of like finagle him somehow, work something out. I've also got to make contract offers on all these other decent AHL players, and then I think we're set. Alright guys, Hurdle rejects our contract offer, wants to test free agency. I'm thinking maybe it'd be better for us to just wait till free agency to sign him, as I can't really see too many teams paying $9 million for the guy. A lot of times too, if a guy doesn't want an extension with you, it actually just makes more sense to go to free agency. You can often get him cheaper, so I think we're going to have to do that. Uh, we have $14 million to spend, and if we do sign Hurdle, I'm going to have to trade either Donato or LeBanc. I'm thinking Donato because LeBanc signed a little bit cheaper, one extra year, uh, so it just kind of gives us a bit more flexibility. Also, I think Donato has more value, so we can probably get a better return for him. Alright guys, so it's another free agency period. Unfortunately, we could not get Hurdle signed. We'll see what he's asking for. Who else is out there? Braden Point. Is he a UFA? RFA, okay, that'd been nuts. Morgan Riley, I said I need an offensive defenseman. Going to cost us a bit more though than uh, Shane Cost to spare. Olafson wants 11-6, Rust, McCann, 10-3 for an 86, um, Hurdle's asking 9-5, four teams interested in him, jeez, uh, Patrice Bergeron, Justin Schultz, P.K. Subban, Radulov, Mikhaev wants 7-2, that's insane, so contracts are crazy right now, Carter Verhaeg wants 6-8, okay, um, we'll have to be smart here about where we spend our money, Mika Zibanejad, same rating as Hurdle, wants 6'2 for 6 years, 29 years old. Hurdle wants 9'5 for 5 years, and again, I think his ask is due to how well he played last year, but that was because he was playing on first line getting plus 5. Zibanejad's also a sniper, like Hurdle, right-handed. Um, he could potentially, says he fits on the forward line too, I mean he could get, potentially give us a nice chemistry boost, I'm willing to try and get him if we can't. And looking at the defenseman here, guys, I feel like Nurse or Ristolainen could be a good replacement for Gossip Spare. Nurse, though, doesn't fit on any of the lines according to the Pro Scout. It's pretty accurate there, 3 of 4. Ristolainen, though, all defensive pairings. Nick Luddy as well, about a million bucks cheaper. One overall lower. A uh, bit better hands, 88 deking. All defensive pairings, and that's for sure by our Pro Scout. So maybe Nick Luddy is actually the way to go. Um, in terms of the goaltending, Marc-Andre Fleury is available. Same with Duke Rask. Uh, thing is, though, both 35+. Plus. And we have Bennington. Let's take a look here at potential, see if maybe there's a good young goalie available. Looking at two-way, marking in here, 2067 medium starter. I mean, I feel like we might as well get him for free. Stuart Skinner as well, 2380. I don't know why Edmonton always lets him go. Uh, if we didn't have Gustafson, I'd definitely sign him. Marking in here would just be like our fifth goalie, so might as well grab. And looking at two-way defenseman here, Victor Mete is available, 24 years old, 79 overall, medium top four. I mean, could be bottom pair for us, depending on what happens with trades, or... I uh, would for sure help out the AHL team. I'd also like to sign Juan Zaboral because if they grow it all, become 80s. Um, you never know. Juan's actually a former Shark. Uh, Zaboral there will offer a contract too. I see we're actually at 47 to 50, so we're going to have to uh, trade away some of our worst contracts. And like I was saying, I would like to make an offer to Nick Letty here. 31 years old, so we'll do till he's 34. Or I guess 35, it's 50k. So yeah, 34 is probably safer. 5.3 million, let's do 5.4, and he has how many other teams interested? Zero teams right now, so maybe we can kind of swoop in, be the team to get him. In terms of the forwards, I would like Zibanejad. Hurdle, obviously, the guy we want the most, but four teams interested. I feel like what we should do is offer something to both, and then whoever accepts, accepts. So Hurdle, we're going to try one year again, 8 million bucks. Zibanejad here will try two years, 6.5. Also looking at two-way players here, Sorrell is available, 25 years old, 80 overall. I mean, he can make the fourth line, if not, that's just a really good value. Um, looking at other guys here, obviously we want players that can grow. Moran, is he a UFA? Oh, he's an RFA, okay, so they're probably going to match. Now there's this man, Tiki V guy, I, I probably butchered that, 2171, medium top 9. Um, Iskakov, 2171 as well, medium top 9. Sometimes they can grow into players. I feel like we can't sign all of them, we just don't have the roster spots. Um, those two look to be the best. They're the only ones that are actually in the 70s. Oh, wow. And Brett Leeson's also available. 23-78. Roll fourth line. I'm thinking a good AHL player. 
Uh, he's a former first round pick, I believe, by the Washington Capitals. Um, yeah, or sorry, second round pick, 2019. So we'll try and get him signed. We're gonna have to trade away at least five, maybe more guys um, in order to take in all these contracts. So next you guys trying to trade five players to the Vancouver Canucks. They're all AHL guys. Some of them probably would be scratched in the AHL. Two seventh D potentials, two medium bomb six, one top nine. Uh, for the LA Kings third round pick, the values on our side, we'll see what they say. Trades rejected. I say they only have 26 of 50 contract spots, so I'm just trying to get, you know, I'll take a seventh, honestly, but there we go. Fourth round pick for all those guys. Should now be able to sign everybody, hopefully. So this marketing goalie accept our offer. Again, he'll be third string AHL, but D's potential, he's young. <laughs> Joe Thornton, I'm not giving up. Sorry, Chicago. Um, so Borl accepts, so they'll help with the AHL D. We actually just trade away two or three AHL defensemen in that trade. Mete as well, potentially NHL. Uh, Sorella there, Leeson, Wong. Mantikivi also accepted his offer. I have to like basically slow down and read that one. Um, Ishkov there. So, so far looking pretty good. Everyone said yes. And now guys, I'm offering Ryan Donato, the Vancouver Canucks for Jet Wu. Wu's on the block. I don't know why. 21 years old, 76 overall, medium top four. Solid defenseman there. Would just be added to like the young core of defense we have. Donato, I said I kind of wanted to trade. Uh, move on from his contract. He dropped in rating. We have a lot of forwards. Plus, if by some chance we get Hurdle and Zibanejad and Letty, uh, we actually won't have the money for them all. So I'm basically just preparing for that situation. Um, I think this for sure goes through. They want Donato, who's on the block. Value is equal. I think maybe we even had a bit more value on our side. So um, just another nice prospect defenseman there to the team. Hopefully we still have enough contract spots for everybody. Nick Letty joined the team. There we go. Hopefully he can have the same success. Gossip Bear had. Uh, Zibanejad, I appreciate your interest, decided to go with another team. Didn't offer him enough money. Fair enough. Thomas Hurdle uh, wanted a longer contract. Okay, so I feel like we could still use a sniper on that first line. Try and maximize the chemistry. Um, how much money do we have left? 14 million. Brain points there still. We have our first round pick. I think it would cost a lot more than that. I doubt he says yes, guys. I'm going to offer a brain point. Eight and a half here for six years. Two and a half million less than what he wants. First three round picks in next year's draft. So one, two, and three. <laughs> Basically just kind of swinging for the fences. Now this is an interesting one, guys. Tampa Bay just offered us Chaika for a third, a seventh, and Armia. Chaika is another solid defensive prospect. 19 years old, already 68 overall, medium top four. We add him. We have our top six of the future filled out. Um, I mean, I think that's a really good offer. Armia's 81. Didn't really do much on the fourth line, though. Didn't play PK. I'm going to say yes to that, because that is a great trade. Now, Point rejected his offer, which I kind of figured. But if he's available still a month from now, I think we could actually get him. All right, guys, so it's August now. Brain Point's asking for just under nine for one year. I'm going to offer him 8-5. Give our first three round picks, one, two, and three, which took all three together do not equal Brain Point. Um, if we get him, that'd be amazing. Obviously, we definitely make up for missing out on both Hurdle and Zibanejad. Probably we can't get the plus five chemistry bonus back, but I think I'll live with that if I get Brain Point on the team. And obviously, we just made that trade with Tampa Bay. Decided to accept their offer as of now. I don't think they can afford them. We'll find out here in just a couple days. They have six days, I think, to match. And the Tampa Bay Lightning have chosen not to match our offer. First, second, third, we get Brain Point. As long as it's not one or two overall, which would be Connor Bedard or Matt V. Mitchkov, I am more than fine with that. So let's start next season, guys. I'm going to give you a look at the lines. As you can see, they actually have us as a buyer, which I find very surprising. And I think you will too once you see this team. So no longer have plus five on the first line. We do have plus three on the top six, which actually might be better. Kaprizov playing with Wenberg and Meyer, I think is very solid. Kaprizov is also up to an 88, so makes sense we want him on the first line. Duclair, Point, and Lannisgog is a very solid second line. We then have Boldy playing with Thornton LeBanc on the third, and then Gambrel, Kopp, and Sorella in the fourth line. Defensively here, a little bit worse chemistry. Uh, Letty, Manson, top pair, Zadarov, Pelic, second. Murray's were on the bottom, they do get a plus three. Goaltending, Bainton starting. Gustin back him up to now an 84, so he could take over Bainton. He still has a few years left to grow. That'd be honestly a surprise and a nice one too. Didn't expect that when we signed him at a free agency. Looking to AHL team, we have Matthew Beneers, Kent Johnson now playing on the first line with Brett Leeson. Um, Ozzy Weisblatt there playing with Perfetti and Chmielski on the second line. You can see every single line here gets a plus one. So um, we actually have some things to look forward to now in the AHL. Defensively, it's not even fair. We have Ferraro there. Um, a surprise, he actually got beat out by Zaboro for the NHL spot. Playing with Murphy on the top pair. We then have Jet Wu with Mete, Alexia with Waugh. Lowest rating on our HLD is 77. We have 380s. Like, absolutely ridiculous AHL defense. 
Goaltending-wise, Jesper Wallstedt there. I'd like to be the starter, but I know that the uh, assistant coach will probably Allen felt start a bit more. Hopefully, Wallstedt gets to a 74 early on. Um, we get a bit more starts, but AHL team looks very good as well. Obviously, they have to defend that Calder Cup, and I think they have a good chance of doing just that. Next, we'll take a look at the offense, defense, and goaltending. Um, also, two guys, Trey and Hurdle. We did lose a captain. He wore an A, so I think I gave his A to Meyer. William Carlson here for Ken Johnson. I'm going to stay out of that. I think our offense is more than good enough. So here you go. Let's see what those overalls are for next season. 94, 92, 87. So I think they look pretty good. Last year we made the playoffs, bounced in the first round. Hopefully next year we can do a little bit better than that. But that's me, guys, for this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.